Hey, what's up, YouTubers? I'm back with another video. You YouTubers, what's up? How y'all doing out there? Um, I showed y'all a video how to install a turbo on a small block Chevy, but I haven't went into detail about the turbo kit that I purchased for the small block Chevy. And now you gotta excuse my face. I removed my whisker. Got me looking brand new, straight up out of the womb. So, um, you've seen other channels about eBay turbo kits, which that's what that is. It's an eBay turbo kit and how they talk about fitment and quality so you saw those videos and the problems they have and kind of beware well i'm gonna tell you about this turbo kit you just might like it. so this year this is the small block chevy turbo kit that i purchased off ebay and as you can see it's all bolted up now i'm gonna tell you in detail the modifications that this kit may or may not need so i'm gonna just do a little pan around so you can see it's all there it's all bolted up and now we're going to talk in detail about this turbo kit now i'm pretty sure you've seen videos on ebay about these uh chinese turbo kits and i'm gonna be straight up with you there's nothing about chinese uh, uh how can i say chinese product there's a lot of things that you buy that's made in china you know them nike Y'all love to buy, paying a hundred and hundred, two hundred dollars for, straight out of China. Them pair of Jordans you paying three, four hundred dollars for, standing in line, straight out of China. So, it's not that China make bad product. It's just that when it comes to the automotive industry, you just got to watch what you get. And, uh, you know, it, it's a lot of bad Chinese products out there. It's a lot of good ones out there. But every now and then... If you know what you're looking for, you can come across a good one. And I'm going to be straight up with you. In my opinion, this is one of the good ones. You've seen videos on eBay. One specifically, uh, I think they call it the, the, the Hot Rod Network. Check out that channel. They do a review on a, a eBay Turbo for a small block Chevy. And a turbo kit that they purchased, I think it was about $700. I'm not sure. Correct me if you want in the comments. But they were showing you how the the turbo itself, they had to bolt it up uh, backwards because if they would have bolted up the right way, which is the turbo supposed to face the front of the car. They had the front uh, turbo housing facing the back of the car because it would hit or it wouldn't line up if they did it the way it was supposed to. So that's a no-no. You don't want to buy nothing like that and put it in your car because it, it'll give you a headache and make everything else a hassle they talked about the the baby wastegate that was on there that wasn't able to relieve enough uh exhaust pressure so they had uh boost spikes and uh I'm trying to think of something else that they were talking about but basically that kit that they purchased off ebay it needed a lot of modifications to get it to work they got it to work but the stuff that they was doing to get it to work the average person probably couldn't do on their own and it would become a headache so uh, I'm going to show you in detail about this turbo kit and what I had to do to get it on and make it run. All right, as you can see, the actual turbo is bolted up the right way. It's facing towards the front of the car like you want it to. The wastegate, uh, that wastegate that came with that kit was, uh, I believe, a 38 millimeter. This is a 44 millimeter wastegate, so it's bigger than the one that they had on uh, the, the turbo kit that they purchased. Now, another thing, this isn't a turbo kit, um, like a full kit. I pieced this together and I'm gonna uh, let you know how to piece it together so you don't run into the issues that they was having on uh, some of the other YouTube channels that was doing reviews about turbo kit. Like I say, I pieced this together. This wasn't a, a one box ordeal. So the exhaust manifold, we gonna talk about that first. And uh, the exhaust manifolds are off eBay. I wrapped them, and uh, pff, that wrap is off eBay. I don't recommend eBay wrap. <laughs> you can get it to work, but oh man, this stuff, it, uh, how can I say it? It it pretty much like falls apart in your hand. You, you get a bunch of stringy, uh, oh man, it, it's kind of crazy. It's kind of a headache, and it's real itchy. It'll make you itch, you know what I'm saying? So we talk about that on another video, but um, this exhaust manifold, it's from PowerGo. I know everybody heard of PowerGo. It's a huge company, and they're real popular. But uh, 
it's called Power Go. Power Go Motorsports. I got it off eBay. All these parts I'll put in the uh, the um, description. I'll put a link how you can get your hands on them in, in case you wanted to do a small block Chevy turbo build yourself. So these headers is Power Go. And we can talk about, you know, getting them on a small block Chevy, what you need to do, and the trouble I may or may not uh may not have had putting them on the car so my opinion these these uh headers they pretty good okay i really didn't have no issues putting these headers on this car except for on this side um and then it's not putting them on the car the headers went on the car perfect just like any other uh set of headers the uh the, the how can i say the bolt holes they all lined up the bolts went in with minimum problem. Now, certain bolts, I can get the full, uh, how can I say, the clothes in of a wrench around it. Certain size like this one, uh, I can't. You got to use the opening. But that could be fixed. I have 7 sixteenths uh, bolt heads on here. If I would have used 3 eighths, oh, man, it, it would have been a lot easier. So that was my fault putting not the wrong size, but... Just to make it easier for myself, I could have put 3 8 instead of uh, 7 16. Now, the only problem that I had with the uh, the headers, this, um, what's that? Uh, cylinder number 5. You can kind of see it, but like I said, wrap. I don't want to touch all this because, like I stated, it make you real itchy. And I don't have no gloves on. And I love y'all YouTube, but I don't feel like itching for y'all. Um, cylinder number 5 was a little too close to the uh, 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 the header tube. And I kept burning the spark plug boot. Um, I have a video and uh, it's called how not to, what is it called? How not to burn spark plug boot, something like that. So I fixed, I ended up just getting a uh, shorty plug, which is shorter spark plugs to put in there. And that's a common problem with headers anyway. You do have headers, you got perfect clearance and all that, but you have, uh, uh, name brand header that still the uh, uh, the distance between the, the spark plug boot and the header is too close and you start burning spark plug boots and all that kind of stuff that's that's a common problem so I don't blame that on these Chinese uh, headers you, you get that with American headers so you know it, to me you get set of headers so Excel and other companies make uh, shorter spark plugs and what that do it, it creates a gap between uh, the header tube and um, the spark plug boot. So I bought some Excel shorty plugs and I got a ceramic boot for that uh, that spark plug wire. That, um, I ran into that problem. And besides that, oh, the other problem is if you look down there, it has a flange on this side. It's a three bolt flange on this side. If we go over to the other side. It stopped right here. There was a a uh, a cross. What was it like? The uh, it's like a U. It comes from the driver's side and it used under the vehicle by the uh, the uh, uh, torque converter and it comes back up and it stopped right here where my fingers pointing. But there wasn't a flange. It was just a cut. So I would have liked it if they would have made it a flange, not specifically in this location because it's kind of tight in there. To try to you know put a flange and then bolt it up and all that because of the the starter and then it's close to the frame but if they would have put a, a a flange on this side to where you could just bolt it up without having to go to a, a muffler shop and get it welded oh man that that would have been a plus i, I probably would have gave them a, a, a plus right now because of this it's probably like a bb minus you know because of the uh the closeness over there for the uh, spark plug and then you know not having a flange on this side but those are minor stuff that's that's things that a, the average guy could fix on itself um you could take it to a muffler shop and get it welded i just told you how to fix that uh spark plug problem over there so uh that was the second issue that i had with these headers that wasn't bad you know so mine looked like this because i actually got another um cross pipe to put on it because i lowered my camaro and a cross pipe that came with this uh, kit 
hung a little too low once I lowered my Camaro. So I went to the muffler shop and uh, instead of, maybe I told you, it went around by the um, torque converter. They extended it back towards the uh, drive shaft and tucked it tighter so it doesn't drag the ground and I can keep my uh, Camaro sitting at the height that it's at. So other than not having a flange on this side and uh, being close to that that uh, uh, spark plug wire, I didn't have any problems with this uh, exhaust manifold. So um, let's move on to the next step. And if something come up that I'm probably forgetting, I'll let you know. All right, nails. Let's talk about the wastegate. I stated before on the, the what, what's that channel? It said Hot Rod Network when they were saying that the wastegate was too small for the, um, the, the to relieve enough exhaust pressure to keep the, uh, the, the boost under control. So they had a 38 millimeter. This kit actually come uh, for the opening for a uh, uh, 44 millimeter wastegate. This is a 44 millimeter meter waste gate and this like I stated did not come with the kit I pieced this whole kit together so I'm gonna talk about it individually so you know um, how I did it and where these parts came from this is also an eBay uh, waste gate now that I do not recommend that's a no-no if you have an engine that you paid thousands of dollars for you know it only been in a car a short period of time and and you know you you treasure it and you want to hold on to it for a while. When you buy an eBay kit, do not stick with the eBay wastegate. There is parts that you don't want to mess around with. You want to get a good name brand wastegate. Um, same thing with my uh, 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 Integra. This is a carburetor. My Integra has a uh, uh, fuel injection. So when you buy a turbo kit, whether it's carbureted or fuel injected, there's things you don't want to mess around with. And if it's fuel injected, the injectors. Don't mess around with the injectors. Go get you some good name brand injectors. Because if one of those fail or uh, uh, start making your car run lean because you ain't getting enough gas under boost, boom, you done messed up an engine. Same thing with the wastegate. You get you a cheap wastegate and it uh give you a boost spike and you... uh over boost your engine well guess what you know how like elon musk sent that uh tesla to the moon well you go send some you go send some small block chevy rods to the moon and they might get there quicker than that tesla you do not want to play around when it come to wastegate this one is an ebay wastegate and the only reason i went ebay wastegate because this is my this is my first time putting a turbo on a small block chevy okay and this engine been in this car for almost 20 years, like I stated in other video. It already had problems. And it's about time for this car, I mean, it's about time for this engine to come out anyway. So I didn't want to practice on a on on an engine that I didn't spend thousand dollars for, only had it for a little while. I'm gonna practice on that with a turbo kit and blow it sky high. I didn't want to do that. So I'm using this old butt engine that I didn't had for 20 years and you know, if something go wrong, it's not a big deal. Hey, it's, it's old. It got problems already. I blew it up. That's that's my reason to get this thing out of here. So, I went ahead and bought a cheap eBay wastegate. But like I say, I do not re recommend you to buy a cheap eBay uh, wastegate. This one cost me 70 bucks. A real good one, Tile or HKS and uh, Turbo Smart and all them. You go pay about $200 for a good wastegate. Like I say... If you want to keep your engine on earth and, and, and not send parts to the moon, don't cheap out on the wastegate, okay? So uh, get you a good one for about $200 and your life will be, you know, a, a, a lot much happier knowing the reliability of the wastegate. For those who not uh, who might not know, the wastegate is what, um, how can I say? It what keeps the boost level under control. If you say, okay, I only want to put boost uh five psi well this wastegate is supposed to go keep you at five psi if you got a wastegate that that's uh not opening and you thinking you gonna be boosting at five psi and this dang on thing don't open guess what your five psi just went out of the window and you go boost as high as that turbo allow you know what I'm saying however much this 
turbo could put out, that's what's gonna go in your engine because your waste gate didn't open and you didn't send the ride to the moon. So don't wait, uh, uh, cheap out on a waste gate. Okay, please, please. Okay, I, I'm not reliable, please. But we gonna move on. This is the turbo. That turbo, I also got off uh, eBay. I'm sorry, but I don't remember the name of the company that I got that uh, waste gate from. But they all the same. If you get it, uh, it's a company called like uh, eBay. They got Speed Daddy, uh, DNA. Uh, it's some other ones on there too. Them the only two that's coming to mind. Speed Daddy, DNA. It don't matter who you get it from. It, both of them is Chinese waste gate. It's the same thing, okay? So this thing was about $70. It came with uh, three or four springs. It had a five pound, seven pound, and I think a 14 pound, something like that. But um, don't do what I do if you value your engine. Get a good uh, waste gate. Now, this turbo is from uh, Speed and Rods. Speed Max Speed and Rods. That's the name of the company that you can get this uh turbo from. This turbo cost me $160. And I'm I'm satisfied with this turbo. I've ran this turbo um a couple times in this car and uh, I didn't take the screen off. But it didn't have any um uh, play, shaft play. Um you know the in and out, it was very minimal, but in and out is not really a problem. It's the up and down shaft play. It didn't have none of that. And if you look in here, you don't see any oil sitting on this, uh, this is called an anti, anti surge housing or whatever. But, uh, you don't see any oil around here. I bought turbos brand new, run them for a day or two, and you'll see it wet. Now, you might see a little wetness in the beginning because they oil these turbos when they build them, put together, and all that to keep them lubricated. Every now and then, you get a little bit of that oil to come out right here. But once you run it and clean it off, if it's a good turbo, it shouldn't come back and this one it was like that it had a little bit from them oiling it and building and all that kind of stuff once i cleaned it off it never came back this turbo is a gt40 um turbo and like i say i haven't had any problems with it with shaft play and, and spitting oil and all that kind of good stuff so this turbo cost me 160 dollars and for the little bit of time that i put on it it's fine. I haven't had no problems with it. So, uh, I can put it on the right way. There's another guy who has a channel called, um, Fuel Injection Sucks. <laughs> That's the name of his channel. You can check him out. And, uh, he installed a small block Chevy Turbo on his truck. And he was stating after he installed the, the turbo kit on his truck, he said he couldn't remove his valve covers no more because the turbo sat too close to the valve cover. Now, if you look in there, I got plenty of room. And these are the tall valve covers. This the tall ones. This is not the stock short valve covers. I don't know if you can see that, but these are the tall ones because of the rocker on that's in there. And I could take my valve cover off if I wanted to. The only thing I had to remove to get my valve cover off was the uh, 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 the fuel pressure gauge that was right here. That's why it's not on right now. I removed it to check my cam and yeah, long story short, I, I removed my valve cover to check my rocker arm, to travel with a rocker arm. And uh, I got my valve cover off. I didn't remove the turbo or anything. Only thing I removed was that uh, fuel pressure gauge. So he stated he had to, he couldn't get his valve cover off once the turbo was put on. I don't have that problem. So that's another thumbs up. He had to notch his frame because the, 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 the header was too close to the frame so he actually notched it cut like a, a rectangle shape into it so the header wouldn't hit the frame and as you can see i don't have that problem i got plenty of room that's down below it, it's not it's trust me it, it's not touching it or hitting it or like that and if you go on the uh driver's side same thing over here it's not hidden i got plenty of room these headers thumbs up on that i didn't have them problem so turbo it's from uh, Max Speed and Rods, $160. I haven't had no problem with it. Spool up, cool. You can hear it, you know. Everything is cool. Everything is dandy. And then um, the top hat. The top hat is a, a Spectre. Top hat. Spectre. I think it's called Spectre. I had a Spectre. Before it was turbo, I had a Spectre uh, 
intake on here. And I just reused it. That's the same Spectre top hat. But I had to put a spacer on it because this sat too low to line up with the turbo. So I had to put a spacer on it to get it to line up, you know, with the turbo. So that's what I used for a top hat. But you can get a top hat off eBay. Cheapest one I've seen was, I think it was like $107 free shipping. You can also get them off eBay. They got that, uh, that Holly uh top hat i think it's like 150 160 dollars and it goes up i've seen some top hats for 200 250 300 dollars in my case i don't need nothing that drastic and the carburetor you go need a different carburetor whenever you uh how can i say do force induction that carburetor is a uh a demon blow through carburetor and it works fine only thing i had to do to it was uh when i first got it i had to lower the float the float level because it was flooding over but besides that the carburetor works fine um like i say in my previous video i don't spend a lot of money on nothing so what i did when i got my uh carburetor it was refurbished off ebay this carburetor that i've seen they go for about 800 bucks i got mine for i think it was 480 it was refurbished and at that time ebay was doing a uh 15 percent off everything so no matter what you buy you get 15 percent off and at that time i bought this uh carburetor so with the refurbished uh uh price plus that 15 percent off i paid like 480 for this carburetor so you know i, I saved about 300 dollars. you know so um that's the carburetor that's another thing but let's stick to the uh turbo kit so we talked about the uh, the exhaust manifold we talked about the turbo, and we talked about the wastegate. Everything bolted up. I haven't had no issues with this kit. It's a Chinese kit. It bolted up good, and it ran good. The only issues I had was with this engine, which has nothing to do with the turbo kit. My engine was tired before I even put this turbo kit on here. Some people might have said, well, why did you do it? Because, like I say, I was practicing. This is the first turbo kit I put on a small block Chevy. I can't say I know what I'm doing. I mean, I put plenty of turbos on, on uh, uh, imports, Honda. But this is the first time I put it on the Chevy. So I wanted to put it on the engine that was ready to go anyway. Just in case something go wrong. It's on the engine that was ready to go. No big deal, you know. So that's why I put this on here. And I'm glad I did. I know the ins and outs and what to do now. So when the next engine come, I can put this turbo kit on there with no problem. Long as it's another small block. If it's a big block, none of the stuff is going to fit. So I have to stick with a small block. So my opinion on this turbo kit, the exhaust manifold, like I say, is from a company called Power Go Motorsports. I give them a thumbs up. Everything bolted up good. The, uh, uh, the bolts went in. And, oh, another thing, the, the spark plugs. I didn't have to dip or, or ding the, the exhaust tubes because it was too close to a, a spark plug and I couldn't actually get the spark plug boot on there. You know how you heat up the, 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 the header tube and, and hammer it to put a little dent in, a dent in it so you can get the uh, spark plug wire on there? I didn't have to do none of that on the uh, hot, rod, hot Rod Network channel. That what they was doing on the header tube i don't know how many they had to do but they had a torch they was heating it up and they was dinging it bang 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 till they had enough clearance to get the spark plug boot on the uh spark plug i didn't have to worry about none of that and this is a chinese kit so i didn't have to worry about dinging it i didn't have to worry about fitment it came with the opening for a 44 millimeter uh wastegate um as I stated, the only problem that I had with one spark plug was it wasn't that I couldn't get the boot on there and I had to ding it. It was just that it was too close and the heat from the exhaust was melting the spark plug uh, spark plug wire boot. So I got the shorty plug, put them on there, and that fixed my problem. So all in all, like I say, I give this turbo kit, I give it a B minus, B plus somewhere around there. It bolted up good. I did have to go 
to the muffler shop over here. As you can see, they put a V-band back there, and you can see there's two different kind of metal. Uh, they added it so they can make it longer, as I stated, to go back by the drive shop. And uh, I will show y'all, but I'm kind of in the jam. But um, before I did this, the the U pipe. Oh, you know what? I actually have it. Bear with me. It's right here. I actually kept it. So that's the part that went under the driver's side. And this is the part that was on the uh, passenger side. So it looked like that. It just went, bolted up on the driver's side, wrapped underneath the car like a U, and went up on the passenger side. And you can try this. The only reason I didn't keep it like this, because like I said, it hung too low and I was scraping it. You can you can see right here, it got some scrapes on it from, like I said, I lowered my uh, car, so it's not really uh, focusing, but you can see it scraped up right there. So it hung a little low because I, I, I lowered my Camaro. Now I had, this is called a uh, band clamp. Got the two bolts on there. And this is what held this end to the other end that's on the car with the band clamp. That was fine, although I was losing uh, exhaust. It had an exhaust leak. Was it too bad to actually, how can I say? Uh, was it a real bad exhaust leak to where it was killing performance majorly? No, it wasn't that bad and it actually held. It's just that I'm real picky when it comes to turbo. If I know there's an exhaust leak, even though you couldn't hear it per se, the only reason I knew is because I did a test and used the air compressor and blew it through the exhaust and I heard it. But with the car running, that exhaust leak was so small you couldn't even hear it. And uh, like I said, I'm real picky. I knew I had an exhaust leak, so I didn't want no exhaust leak. And same thing with boost leak. I usually check and if I got the smallest little boost leak, I'm like, oh, I got to fix that. I got to fix that. I mean, you know, my Camaro, this beast right here, put out about, about 140 horsepower. So, you know, I put a turbo on it. I need all the boost in <laughs> I, I, I can't I can't have no boost leak or exhaust leak because I need all I can get. You know what I'm saying? For this thing to get up and go, I, I need it all. I need it all. So, that was the uh, down pipe that went across and it wasn't a big deal. Everything bolted up. I put a band clamp on this side and it worked fine. So if you was to buy a turbo kit for a small block Chevy and go through them, the, how can I say, don't really have no major modifications to do, I, could, I recommend the exhaust manifolds from Power Go Motorsport. Bolted right up, didn't have no problem. Hopefully this video helped y'all in your adventures of discovering a, 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 a low-budget low exhaust, I mean, yeah, a low-budget exhaust manifold to put on your small block Chevy, Power Go Motorsports. I paid, at that time, I, it was 180 bucks, free shipping. But I have noticed the prices went up, I think it's, like 220 now, something like that. But that's expected. Once the word get out, something is good, the price will go up because the demand for it is higher. So you start out low, once people realize, hey, this is a good product and everybody start buying it, hey, look, you gotta make your money. You raise the price, the demand is higher. That's, I mean, that's, that's for anything, you know? Shoot, dealer markups, car only worth this much. You go to a dealer, they got a dealer markup, and they charge you extra for it. That's just where, you know, how they say that's how the cookie crumbles. That's just where the world, where it's always going to be. But um, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you have any more questions about this turbo kit, just leave a comment in the, uh, in the comment section of the video. And please, like and subscribe. I do these videos, and all I ask in return is a thumbs up. And, and, you know, subscribe, you know, just hit that, hit that, that, that bell down there, subscribe for me. And, um, I keep these videos coming. I'm pulling this engine out. It got a flat cam in it. So, uh, 
I'll keep y'all posted on the next engine that go in here. And once that engine get broken in, this spooler, this Chinese spooler is going right back on it. So uh, I'll catch y'all on the next video. God bless. Hit me up if you have any questions. I got you. Oh, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Before I go, I, I missed one thing. The, the oil feed line. These oil feed lines, like I say, get them off eBay. You can get them from uh, DNA or uh, 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 what's the other one? Speed Daddy. 20 bucks. It'll come with the line. Uh, I bought this fitting separately just to kind of uh, kick it out to the side. Because usually it goes in from the top straight up. But I need hood clearance, so I didn't want it to go straight up like that. So I bought this fitting separately to kick it out to the side for hood clearance. But the oil feed lines come with the line. It come with that fitting at the top. And it'll come with the, the drain fitting right there at the bottom. And let me come over here real quick. And if you look down in there, you can see the the fitting right there. Those that's where I'm stealing oil from to feed the turbo. So it comes with all that. This fitting over here, the oil line, and both of the fittings for the uh the oil feed and the oil drain. So uh that's twenty dollars right there. And that's it. Okay, in total. I tallied it up. Let me see, man. In total, I think I spent. Oh man, I think it was like a thousand bucks or less, depending which way you want to go. It was like a thousand bucks get this thing on here, but that was at separate times. I didn't, I didn't buy it all together. I bought one thing at a time, here and there, different time periods, and I just pieced it together. But. Before I get up out of here, remember these names. Write them down. Um, we got uh, Power Go Motorsports for the exhaust manifold. This Westgate, I don't remember exactly who I bought it from, but you can get it from DNA, Speed Daddy, whoever. They own there. This one's 70. They got one for like 50, but it got less uh, 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 springs in it. Uh, this one came with like three or four springs. You can get them for like 50 bucks. They only had like maybe one or two springs in there or whatever and left fittings and all that. So here we go again. I'll talk too much. Power Go Motorsports, Speed Daddy, DNA, whoever. This bad boy right here. That's uh, Max Speed and Rods. This turbo was $160. Okay. And then Top Hat. Top Hat. That's a Spectre. Top Hat. But you can get them on eBay all day long from different companies. Uh, like I say, the cheapest one I seen was a hundred bucks, hundred and seven dollars, be exact, free shipping. Uh, and I tell you about the oil feed line, that was twenty bucks. So the oil feed line, like I say, you can get it from Speed Daddy or DNA. All right, and that pretty much that'll get you going. That'll get you going, and then depending on you know the angles you need right here. This, like I said, I had a Spectre uh, intake. This is the piping from the intake. I just cut it to make it fit this turbo. Okay, I did some cutting and little modifications right there to get it to fit this turbo. Uh, the gentleman channel, uh, fuel injection suck. All he did was use a, 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 a silicone uh, coupling. All this right here is just a, a silicone coupling. One silicone coupling. And he got it to work. I use mine from an existing intake I already had. Um, you could use PC, what's that? PC, that dang on uh, garden stuff. The PCV, PV, PVC? Yeah, something like that. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You can use that. That costs a little bit of nothing. Put it in there, you know? So that's it. Like I said, hope you liked the video. I'm going to leave y'all alone. Bye. This ain't cool.